I want to welcome you on behalf of Reverend Debbie Bergio and Winter Grace Senior Ministries to today's devotional video. My name's David Jacobson, and I serve as the lead pastor of Catonsville United Methodist Church in Catonsville, Maryland. I'd like to share with you a scripture reading from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. Open your hearts to hear the reading of God's word. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Do you ever feel like you have trouble staying focused as you go throughout your day? I recently heard an elderly church member of mine say, uh, I swear that they put uh, something on the door of the grocery store that wipes your memory as you go in because you it always seems like you have two or three things that are on your mental list. You, you don't need to write them down because you know what they are. And then the second you walk into the store, you can't remember what you came for. I don't know that the grocery store has a memory wiping device, but I do know that the second you walk in, you're bombarded by distractions, beautiful flowers and fresh fruit, maybe the smell of uh, freshly cooked donuts, and any number of things. But rarely are any of those things why you're there. In life, it can be easy to forget the reason why we're here. Jesus's words in this scripture passage help us to stay focused. They help us to remember why we're here. There are really only two things on our list, and I think we can remember them. So we need to not get distracted. We need to not forget them. Jesus says the first commandment is to love the Lord your God. And the second, he says, is to love your neighbor as yourself. These are two sides of the same coin, and so Jesus couldn't separate them. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. At the very least, this means that we aren't supposed to love God just a little bit. We're supposed to love God with everything that we are, with our whole being. John Wesley, one of the primary founders of the Methodist movement, said that all of God's commands are covered promises. It seems like this would be a very hard thing to do, to love God in this way. But what John Wesley means is that when we trust in Jesus Christ, God's grace forms us into the people who really can love the Lord in this way. We can love the Lord with all our heart. Uh, in the same way that we love a spouse or a child, for example, we can love God. You know, when I tell my wife, I love you with all my heart, I'm saying there is nothing that I wouldn't do for you. All my affections are completely yours. And, and this is one aspect of the full love that we're to have for God. We can love God with all our soul. Uh, in scripture, the soul is the whole person, but it's also the seat of the emotions. Again, to use my wife as uh, an example for the sake of analogy, when I see her, I feel joy. When I'm near her, I, I feel secure. She delights me, and, and sometimes her kindness even brings me to tears. All of these emotions are, all of these emotions and more, are fitting to direct to God. They're fitting for a way to love God. Different people are going to express their emotions in different ways. But if our worship is actually emotionless, then we aren't loving God with the fullness of ourselves, as we can. We can also love God with all our minds. We don't check our brains at the door as we live out our Christian faith and, and love for God. We study the Word of God. We use all our resources at our disposal to understand it. Jesus says in John chapter 14, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We need to use all our minds to understand and to, to put into practice the commands of Jesus and the teaching of Scripture. And finally, we can love God with all our strength. Remember, it's a covered promise. You shall love the Lord your God with all your strength. You may be someone who's retired 
wonderful because you have all the more time to love God with all your strength. Because actually there isn't such a thing as retirement from Christian service. How you love God with all your strength may change, of course, as the time goes on. But as long as you live, you have strength that you can use to love God. Don't forget, prayer is a way of loving God with all your strength. And anyone who's spent any amount of time in prayer knows that even if you don't move a muscle, it still takes a lot of energy. But this is how we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the good news is that through trusting in Jesus, we receive God's grace by the Holy Spirit to be enabled to love God in this way. So may you claim that covered promise. May you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength today and always. Grace and peace be with you. Amen.